This video is going to be a look at how the Ravens have attempted to attack cover three, primarily from 2020 and 2021. This is not going to be the only concept or the only manner in which the Ravens have attacked cover three. I would offer to you, however, that this is going to be the way that they have generated the most big plays, the most explosive plays down the field with the passing game. I will digress a little bit and talk about two high safety coverages. Just to preface that a little bit, I think the Ravens have a better idea on how to attack cover three than they do in some of these quarter, soft quarters looks that we see from like the Bengals, the Bills, and, and in some cases, the Broncos and the Patriots in 2020. Well, I think that for whatever reason, we've attacked cover three better when people take the, the strong safety and roll him down either to the strong or the weak side for whatever reason and give us an eight-man front. Um, first play that I'm going to show, and, and really it's the same concept repeatedly, um, is this one right here. It's, so the the play that's illustrated on screen is out of 21 personnel. Ricard for, is number 42, obviously. He is a fullback. So him and Gus Edwards would be two running backs, and then Mark Andrews would be listed as a tight end or be treated as a tight end personnel-wise. This The defensive reactions that are listed here in red are primarily uh, meant to portray how the Oakland Raiders, how the Las Vegas Raiders, excuse me, um, responded to these routes and this concept in week one um, on two occasions. If you remember, Sammy Watkins list, uh, lined up as the number three receiver, had a huge reception and almost scored. I think he got down to like the six or seven yard line. We also missed Mark Andrews once on this. I shouldn't say missed. I think the ball was just slightly overthrown. You'll actually see that play. Uh, but we've run this concept out of 21 personnel. We've run it out of 11 personnel. We've run it out of 20 personnel. So it's a concept that the Ravens use out of multiple personnel groupings. We can use it against base defenses. Typically, when you get a trip set, like we've or trips formation, like I've shown you here, trips to the offense's left or, the, or the right, our right hand side of the screen as we're looking at it, you're going to get someone rolled down over number two. You better. If you, if you don't, we can just run a bubble or toss you. I mean, it's the simplest concept in the world. You got to have somebody outside of number two, either a a, a third level safety and then a second level player lined up outside of three. If you took this strong safety on the screen here and you rolled him back and then you moved the free safety over, we have the edge. We have, we, have, we have the edge. So you have to roll someone down, whether you're in a nickel look or um, a base look like here. This is a base 4-3 base, uh, look. Um, and the way that this works is it's a play action fake to the running back. In most cases, the left guard pulls. In this case, it's the weak side guard. The tight end, Ricard, initially run blocks on the D end and then slides out into the flats. The running back also slides out into the fence flats. What's, what it's meant to do is hold that safety to the strong side, our left-hand side of the screen as we're looking at it here, and then take the number three receiver and run him on what I would call a climb route. Some people would just call it a deep over route, whatever, but it's meant to attack the third of the field that that corner would typically be defending. Well, a lot of times on the back side of three by one formations, you get a, a lock call or a man call or Louie, whatever it is, basically telling that corner, you're man on that tight end. Let's look at some of the film because some of my lead ins have been too long, even though I have made a mental point of, of not doing that. This first play is going to be from 2020 against the Cowboys, and you're going to get Miles Boykin on a huge touchdown catch. Now, it didn't look like a one high safety structure in the beginning, just so you know. Right here, you've got. Two safeties lined up. What's going to happen is one of them's going to spin down. The other one's going to roll back. This corner, we man on Ricard, and someone, you know, they, these two linebackers are probably Banjo and the running back. If the running back goes out here, then this linebacker would take him if, it's, if it is man. Now, I, the name of this video is how we've attacked cover three. So it's generally been a cover three beater play. Even though in not in all of these instances are you getting cover three, you can see that the safety who rolled down had his eyes in the backfield, which has been a constant thing I've been talking about this offseason on my channel. People, people, safeties, linebackers having their eyes on the quarterback too much and not on their read, not on their key, who, who they should be getting their read from. Boykin runs right by him. The corner is locked up on Ricard. Uh, Leighton Vander Esch, who I have a video coming out in about a week on him. Um, is a little late identifying the play action, and Boykin breaks a tackle and scores. You're going to get the end zone angle here, too. Uh, or, this is a concept that we have used multiple times. We use it against Buffalo. I'm going to show that play here in a moment. Vander Esch, Smith, ready to rock and roll against the run. You can see the run action with Ingram, the left guard, which in 2020 
was Bozeman pulling. There's the safety who misread it, or didn't read it, I should say. Wide open, boundary side corner was initially guarding Ricard. No one on Boykin. Easy touchdown by us. Second play we're going to show you, I think, is Buffalo 2020 as well. It looks it looks somewhat different because you have a, a second running back here in the backfield. It's Hayden Hurst. He's going to motion out. So he's going to create that trips look to our left. So the last formation I just showed you was 20 personnel because Ricard and Ingram were the two running backs. There were no tight ends, even though Ricard aligned, lined up as a tight end. This one is 13 personnel. So we have one running back, which I think is Ingram, and three tight ends. Hurst, Andrews, and Boyle. So we run it out of multiple personnel groupings. The Bills are in a two-high safety structure with two safeties here, and they defend it better. Now, now, does that mean that you know we can't attack two high safety structures? No. Just maybe this concept isn't the one to use to attack it. You can see this route by Boyle here holds this corner. This safety is going to run with Andrew's route, which is essentially the same route that Miles Boykin just ran for the touchdown. Very windy day in 2000. This was actually 2019. My apologies. Um, and a very windy day. We we held on for a win 24-17 up there. I've talked about this game multiple times. When you get the end zone angle, you'll get a better view of the football and the accuracy of the throw. Even though it, I believe it's underthrown from a Lamar standpoint, he, he wanted to throw it further. Uh, let me get back to that in a second. That safety right there is going to match up with Andrews. And I think Edmonds is going to try to um, jam up Andrews just a little bit. Gets hands-on from an inside-out perspective. You can see this safety is looking right at Andrews. So well-prepared defenses are going to have an idea that this play is coming. And even though I think Lamar wanted to throw this ball in a different location, he wanted to get it further out there, Andrews is well covered, first of all. He still gave him an opportunity to catch the football. You can see the corner up here was matched up with Boyle. So even though it's a too high safety structure, one of the three defenders in the box, I'm saying this safety right here is in the box. He's lined up at like eight yards. Um, one of those three guys is going to be responsible for running with that vertical by number three. They can't devote the front side safety to a, a vertical by three because you still have two potential verticals over there because it was initially a trip set or trips formation to that side. Hopefully that makes sense. And if it did not, I'll try to explain it a little more as we get to see some Raiders film from week one of 2021. As the season uh, moved on in 2021, I continually stated in videos that we needed to be a little more multiple. And what I mean is run some of our concepts out of different formations and different looks. We've got a 21 personnel group here, two running backs. All right, I think you got Tyson Williams and Ricard. The tight end is backside. Same concept here. Andrews is going to hold the backside corner. And then Brown is going to run the deep over route and be wide open for Lamar to hit on this little play-action fake. What I meant, what I was saying a, a moment ago is, we need to be a little bit more a variable, a little bit more versatile maybe, and not give away our intentions. I think it was Skeptic Goat a long time ago in a live stream uh, said to me, hey, you know, we give away our intentions with some of our formations. We need to be better at hiding our intentions and not showing what we're doing. So in some cases, we line up in a formation and we only run like two plays out of it. So the defense is mentally prepared for that. They're going to study their butts off during the week, and their coaches are going to study like crazy to get them prepared. So the last play I showed you had the back the backside safety to Boyle's side against for the against the Bills, um, covering that that route by number three. This is Marquise Brown, a little bit faster guy, obviously, and it's going to be this linebacker who's trying to run underneath of him because they're in. When I say they, I mean the Raiders. They're in their four three look. This is basically the exact same thing I had drawn up in the beginning, except the formation is flipped and the tight end is flexed out. When I say the tight end, it's Andrews. He's holding this corner, 27. He's guarding him man-to-man, -man, and we're hitting Marquise Brown over the top of that. And that inside linebacker, 44, um, twice got beat on this concept, even though it wasn't the same exact play. Marquise Brown lined up as the number two receiver. Conceptually, this is the same play, even though it's, it's a slightly different formation. We're good at this. Lamar's good at throwing it. We've got to have some more complementary things that we do out of these formations. 
Um, one thing that I am going to mention, and I, and I kind of talked about this in a live stream Saturday morning, is first of all, let me let me just, you know, obviously you can see here this linebacker at this point, he's recognized that it's a pass play. It's not a run play. He's recognized that at this point, but he's beat. See Marquise Brown's feet, corner, locked up on Andrews over here, and, and not able to do anything. Lamar throws it right through that seam. Easy completion. One of the things we've got to do, though, we've got to run the ball to this side. We've got to run the ball to, to, the, to the side where we have the tight end. So in this formation against the uh, Raiders, it's where Andrews is lined up. So we've got to do some runs with Ricard in motion, which we know we do that. Okay, so we're fine on that motion. Let's get back to the Bills play. Same thing here. Got Boyle, tight end, nobody. I don't recall a run to a side that only had a tight end and, and no receiver outside of him. I cannot mentally recall one. Talked about that in the live stream a little bit Saturday. Formationally, when we line up, people are going to recognize that. Mentally, I'm not saying they did, but mentally some of these guys are going to watch this as we line up and say, okay, I know this is not a run play to this side. We've got to figure out a way to be less predictable offensively from a formation standpoint. Um, if, you, if you're not interested in formations, that's okay. I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong, but I'm letting you know that defensively, people are going to respond differently based on the formation you line up in. I know a lot of people get off on and focus on personnel, and personnel is a big issue. You know, If you've got a great player in the slot, certainly they're going to cover things differently than if he's the number one receiver backside. But my point is to you, each formation that you line up in, you need to present at least three plays, three concepts, so that the defense just can't sell out for your main concept. This is our main concept. When we go trips to one side, now we're, we're altering it a little bit here, so kudos to the Ravens, because the first two plays I showed you was out of was from 2020 and then 2019. This is 2021, doing things a little bit different. You're going to get a vertical by Andrews. It's going to be incomplete. We're attacking uh, the Mike linebacker, who's lined up at seven yards, so he's giving himself a little bit more depth. 4-3 structure, sometimes you get the mic lining up a little deeper so that he can do things like this. Now, the difference here is, well, there's two of them, I guess, actually. Lamar's in the shotgun, the running back next to him, off the jump, right? Secondly, there's no play-action fake at all. Okay, fine, no problem. This is one of the staple ways that Greg Roman tries to attack cover three. One high safety structures. Here's the one high safety, all right? You can see that this backside corner is man-to-man -man on Sammy Watkins. So we do have this space available to us, meaning we can attack that area, and we do. It's just that 42 does a nice job of covering it, even though uh, the opportunity is there to make a play of the ball, I believe, is slightly overthrown. I think we got a penalty down here on the bottom side. It's not really that poorly, that poorly thrown. I'm not sure I'll give you the end zone angle on this one. Hope the resolution isn't as bad as it looks on my primary screen. I'm running two screens here. All right, so we do get the end zone angle. Look, you can see how deep this inside linebacker is, 42. Playing way deeper than the strong safety who's rolled up to the weak side, making it look like we got man here, obviously. And we might. You know, we might have man there. It certainly was man on the backside X. It is. It's man on Tyson Williams. So they're playing man on the backside of the trips, and they're zoning the front side. That's not uncommon. Lamar checks. The boundary side corner, that ball actually doesn't look as overthrown from this angle at all. Let me rewind it for a second. Lamar checks the boundary side corner to make sure he's getting off. Watch Lamar's helmet. This is why I try to give the end zone angle as much as possible so people can see it. He's checking that boundary side corner who's off screen, guarding Sammy Watkins, to make sure that he's playing man over there and he's not going to be a part of the play. Lamar knows where he's going with his football immediately. Uh, we do have to get away from that some, to be honest with you. We've got to have situations where... Um, we don't know where we're going with the football on six out of 10 plays. And then those other four plays out of 10, I'm talking about pass plays, you know, we're, we look kind of lost as an offense because we don't exactly know where we're going with the football. Um, maybe I need to do another video to expand on that one. So this one's different, All right. It's, it is, uh, I have it listed as 12 personnel. That's actually mislabeled. I have 12. That's actually, it's actually 21 because Ricard is a tight end. So one of the things that you have to do is you have to have a second option on some of these concepts. I kind of was alluding to that as I finished up the breakdown of that last play. Let's let this run through. 
conceptually same thing. Ricard blocking, trying to hold this corner, number 27. We're running Andrews here. This corner gets off this time. Okay, he gets off, and he stays with Andrews. So Lamar comes off of that read, hits the running back out into the flats. This is the type of thing that early in the season I thought we were doing a better job of. I should when I say early, I mean the um Raiders game and the Chiefs game. After week two, I thought this kind of disappeared. You can see Lamar's helmet looking here. This guy isn't doing a bad job playing underneath of it. And then this corner is getting off as well. When we get the end zone angle, I believe you'll see Lamar glance at that boundary side corner, but I might be wrong. But in any case, we kind of lost track of this, throwing underneath to the running backs late. For those people, they're not going to be watching this video, but for those people who like criticize Lamar and say, you know, I actually saw a person who's a content creator say like three weeks ago in a video I watched, so I'm not going to name who it was, but oh, we know Lamar Jackson doesn't see the whole field, doesn't read the whole field. Well, first of all, nobody reads the whole field, you jackass. They look for particular reads and then attack a particular location on a concept. And then if that's not there, they go to their second read and their third read. No one is capable of seeing the entire field off the snap at the same time, at the same instant. You have to have a, a read. That's just the way our eyes are built. That's just the way humans are built. It was one of the dumbest things I've ever heard someone say. Anyway, Horner is clearly reading Ricard, so he's been prepared. You do have a play-action fake here with Lamar and Tyson Williams. Look at this job by this Michael linebacker, 52. That Perryman? I mean, you know, Andrews has got him beat. Don't get me wrong. But fundamentally, that's a nice job by that Mike linebacker. I'm not one of those guys that doesn't show appreciation to you know players who do a good job he's apexed over if he's the mic you got the you got the will i guess yeah because kj Wright is the sam so they're treating ricard as the strong side so the will is apexed outside of three andrews is three off screen i think marquis brown was the number two receiver the inside receiver and then the number one receiver was out there uh, near the numbers the mic is apexed over to the um what would be the weak side b gap if they're treating ricard as the strong side and the will is outside of the tight end here. 52 does a great job, man. Stay square. Got his eyes looking and reading. Nope, Lamar kept it. Flips his hips. Back to the quarterback. Because he had the wrong read at first. You're going to have the wrong read on play action stuff. I talked about this in an inside linebacker video I did a couple of days ago. Sometimes you get the right read immediately. Sometimes you get the wrong read. It doesn't mean that you personally were wrong. It means you got the wrong read because there was a play action fake that's designed to fool you. Watch Lamar's helmet. This will be the last thing that I break down here. Lamar's definitely looking at the boundary side corner now. Checking Andrews. You see that? I mean, pretty, pretty quick recognition if you ask me. And we shouldn't even compliment Lamar on that. That's just the stuff he does on every daggone play. It's it's not like, hey, Lamar finally did this on this play. No, you know he, those are the things he's capable of. I think he was coached to get the ball downfield. This is one of the concepts that the Ravens use to push the ball downfield against cover three. I need to go and find in the database that I'm creating, and other people are helping me. I've got at least three people helping me at this point. In the database that I'm creating, we're starting to go through and we're starting to put in coverages for the other team. So. Hopefully, I'll be able to get out some videos here before training camp on the Ravens attacking quarters, Ravens attacking man free, stuff like that. And I've kind of done, you know, one or two play videos about that in the past. Let me know if you guys appreciate this. Um, I know this was a singular video from the standpoint of this is one play. I'm going to do a longer series video probably Tuesday night um, on the Ravens pass game and show at least three concepts, two of which the Ravens are pretty good at and one of which we're not, which is mesh. Let me know what you think of this video, the way that I'm conducting this. Um, I'm not editing this. I'm able to kind of break them down on the fly. And it's a long-form video, which I know is, you know, long-form videos are out. Most people are looking at short-form content, and I'm going in the other direction here. I think that's what Ravens fans are looking for. I would love to do stuff like this for other teams, too, to be honest with you. If you have any ideas on what you'd like to see on other teams, I'm thinking of maybe the Jets, Dolphins, Bills, and Patriots, because that's who we're going to play early in the season. How do they attack this? How do they attack that? Anyway, appreciate you guys checking out the video. Please like the video and comment if you want to um, support me and subscribe to the channel You know, if you enjoy it. Uh, consider joining my Patreon if you'd like to support me and, and, and make it me available to you know push out more videos like this consistently.